That's when this gospel becomes the best news that you've ever heard. We're recording. Amen. Sister Barbara already preached the message. We could just take that and chew on that. I am so excited to share with you today what God has put on my heart. But I'm more excited that you are here today because I believe everyone is here for a reason. And I believe Sister Barbara's prayer is a prayer for a reason. So whatever it is today that you take with you, let it rumble in your heart to resonate with you, to shake you up and stir you up in whichever way, shape, or form. Amen? All right. Raise your hand if you know a mom, anyone, if you know a mother. All right. Next Sunday is what? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. And we're going to have our first ever Muffins with Mom. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring a mom, whether it's your mom or bring your kids and you be the mom, and we're going to serve you in the cafe to give you a muffin and just bless you and have you hang out with your, ch your kid or with other people to just celebrate mothers because mothers are so important, so we want to honor you next Sunday, all right? And we'll have a little couple of kids' activities, too, to honor you at the end of the service. So be sure to be here. Bring a mom with you, and uh, that'll be fun. Amen. I have some questions to ask to start my message that I want you to think about that are reflective questions. And I'm just going to move this because I'm thinking I'm a walker and a talker and I don't want to trip over it. I use my hands a lot. Church, think about these questions. Why are we here? Why are we doing this? What's the point? What's the reason why we tune in and turn on our devices or show up to church? The answer is because we are called to be world changers. That's the call for you, and that's the call for the person sitting next to you, the person watching online with you. That you would be filled with the Holy Spirit and encouraged, equipped, and be given the power to do every good work so that you may have renewed strength so you can go out into the world and preach the gospel of the good news. Amen? It's not about one sermon on one Sunday. It's about us taking the whole gospel to the whole world. That is why we are here. See, what the enemy does is the enemy wants to distract us and divide us and pull us away from what our calling is. He wants to drive us in a different direction. If you walk here, if you drive here, if you tune in online, he wants in any way, shape, or form to take you away from that on Sunday mornings. The enemy tries to convince us that we don't need church, but we know that's a lie. Don't let the devil trick you or distract you because he does not want you to have any power or authority. So he targets you. He'll try to distance you from what will equip you and what will empower you. That's why we need to keep God on our side. And that's why we need to know which side we are on. If we all have been given the gospel today, if all of us have heard the gospel before, that's the good news that has been shared with us. And when you believe it and you know that it's real, then you choose to live it out and you walk in that power and you walk in that authority. But the question is, is are we? Are we walking in that power and authority? Are we being world changers? The title of my message today is World Changers. And I was going to title it Wake Up but I thought that was a little bit too strong. Some of us are already awakened by the Spirit and in, 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 in touch and in tune, and I don't want anyone to think that it's a condemning message. But we are all world changers, and we need to just step it up because the world around us, the dark, hurting, evilness that we see day to day, it needs some bright light, some love, and some goodness. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this message. Pray that you fast forward the parts, Lord, that are not necessary. Lord, and you pause the parts that really need to be spoken to us, Lord. Lord, use me as a mouthpiece and as a tool. But, Lord, we just pray that we would humble ourselves, myself included, that we would hear from you this morning. Whatever it is that you want to say to us, Lord, 
be with us, speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. As a church, we want to connect each of you with the word of God, with the teaching of the Bible, with the sermons that we bring so we can bring transformation, with Bible studies that will help carry us throughout our day, that will help transform the way of our thinking and change the words that come out of our mouth. As a church, we want to connect you with each other and what's happening all around us. Everything we do as a church is specifically focused on the gospel message, on the kingdom of God. It's a big picture. If you want to bring restoration and, re restoration and reconciliation to your family, to your neighbors, to your community, then you have to know it's more than just one Sunday, and it's more than just one sermon. Yes, we need Sunday mornings, but we also need every day of the week where we are coming here but going there. For one another, we need to be able to provide opportunities to minister and to minister to each other and to be ministered to, and that's a connection that we have on Sunday mornings, but we have to take those connections throughout the week. So if one week you need food from the soup kitchen, you come and you get some food from the food pantry. But one week maybe you're called to serve at the food pantry. Or maybe one week you drop your kids off in kids' class, and another week you feel led to volunteer and be a teacher in, in the kids' class. See, everyone's a part of the body of Christ, and everyone is included because we need each other. Amen. Maybe there's times where you felt your life was messed up and you needed some serious prayer for deliverance, and you were prayed over. Well, maybe now is the time in your life where you want to be a part of the intercessory team and pray for others. See, what God does for us, he doesn't just do it for us. He does it so that we can take it and bless others with it. What if one day maybe you were crying after service and someone noticed that you were really struggling with something and they came over and they just sat with you. They just hugged on you or encouraged you. Maybe that's what you're called to do at another service, another time. I can keep going and keep going and on and on in numerous ways of examples of how you have maybe been blessed or fed or served. We need to see that God uses those times and circumstances in our lives to teach us and to show us his examples of love and service. That what the Bible says about giving and doing, it's about that it's better to give than receive. That it's an example to us that we know that God took care of us, that he gave to us. He gave his only son. So let's help take care of each other. Church, let's get involved and get connected. And let's understand that with the current restrictions and everything that we're dealing with, that we know that everyone cannot attend service. So are we bringing service to them? If everyone can't come to church, are you being the church and bringing the church to your neighbors? We can pray for what's going on in the church, even if we can't make it to service. We can be involved in Zoom. We can be active on our church's social media page. We can, when we have time and availability, come to the church and give of our time and our talents and our skills. We can give financially when we don't have those skills. Like myself, I wouldn't be someone who could volunteer to redo the bathroom like some of the guys at the church just did. But maybe I can give towards supplies towards that. What I'm saying is we have a church building for a reason to gather to be able to bless others in our community and be blessed. So that we have fellowship. We can build each other up and strengthen us to go into the world to be world changers. It's not about trying to be more involved. I want you to hear this. It's not about trying to be involved in everything. It's about being an agent of change in everything that you do. So everything that you are involved in, that you are an agent of change. I'll give you some examples. So um, how many of you have seen the bulletin before, right? So we give out this bulletin. It's a monthly bulletin, and it's to keep you connected to all the things going on, just like with the announcements that we put up on the screen. These are ways that you can see life happening inside the four walls of this church. But more importantly, that you can see that there's things that you can receive from, that you can grow with, that you can uh, get for your life to be encouraged and equipped and challenged, but then you can also grow from it and give it to others so that we can go beyond this wall, these walls, and serve others. It's not just ink and paper. It's not just a post online. It's deeper than that. We have to see that God is trying to connect you to others for you to be blessed and for you to bless others. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the ending of my message right now. 
so that you can have it in advance. And then I really wanted to sit with you for the whole sermon. And I want you to think about these as your takeaways. I'm going to tell you right now the points that I really want you to go home with. I want you to leave here today with the fact that you and I need to be truth seekers and truth believers and truth tellers. Some would call that a hope messenger. We saw the video about what the gospel is, what the message of the gospel is, and how the message of the gospel is spread. A hope messenger is someone who made the decision to talk the talk and walk the walk, who followed Jesus, the one who is the way. They follow the way of life, the God life, a life of love. Those who share the good news, the great news of hope and deliverance. If we do that, we will be gospel people. How? How can we become gospel people? With our words, with our walk, with our lifestyle, our choices, our actions, that they would reflect Christ. That when others get to know us, they see a forgiven, set free believer. That yucky stuff from your past, it's gone, like we talked about last week. Others will see that God has made a way for sin to be defeated in your life, in my life. Through his power, through that same power of love and forgiveness, others will see a way throughout their own life to be able to be rescued. That's what we do as a believing witness, as a testimony. If we all were rescued, we want to help rescue others. In order for the world to have world changers, we need to see that it's through those doors that that's our mission field. That right here, we are getting equipped and empowered by the word of God, by the teaching and preaching, by Bible study, by our time together. But we need to take that wherever we go. We're not supposed to just go home. We're called to take everything that God speaks to us in our time of service to each other. Everything revealed through prayer and worship, through the message, through being in fellowship with one another as we speak into each other's lives. We take what God did on Sunday and we bring it with us Monday through Saturday. Can I get an amen for that one? Please take whatever you, you learn and hear and grow with on a Sunday morning and bring it with you throughout the week. Why do we do that? Because God tells us we are to be his ambassadors. If God our Father is the true Lord of the world, and if he is the real king of all creation, then we need to spread that good news like wildfire. We need to be world changers. You ask, what is a world changer? A world changer is someone who decides to believe in the gospel, to live it, and to tell it. It's that simple. And guess what? Your world is every day wherever you live. And most importantly, it starts at home. Be a world changer where you are. We don't have to think so far and so beyond where we are. You can start at home. The profound message of the gospel is so powerful, yet it's so simple. It's simple because the message of the gospel helps us stay rooted and grounded in the meaning of our own lives. The message of the gospel helps us stay focused on the mission that we have as believers and on the Great Commission. The message of the gospel helps us face our day-to-day -day challenges that life throws at us. How many of you were faced with challenges this week? Just raise your hand if something came up, anything. All of us, everyone in the room dealt with something or had to handle something that maybe you weren't expecting or you were hoping not wouldn't come back up, but it came at you, right? Think about your daily challenges and the things that you're going through, the things that our nation is facing, the things that our communities are dealing with. We need his strength to get through. I want to talk to you about that, about message, mission, and challenges and how the gospel can be related to that. Message, mission, and challenges are my main points. We need the gospel because without it, we can lose focus on the message, the message of what matters, the message of why we're here on earth. We all woke up today breathing for a purpose, for a reason. We need to remember our mission. Our mission is to preach the gospel and tell others about his love for them, that there is hope found in Jesus and hope in his forgiveness. And then challenges. The challenges of today that we face, we need the gospel because in all the bad and the sad news that we see in the world, we need to be reminded how to face those challenges, how to face the things that we see and deal with in our lives and in others. 
We need the Holy Spirit's power to be with us as we face tomorrow. With keeping that mindset, his kingdom want when we say your kingdom come, your will be done, we have to keep that mindset daily in all that we face. That ultimately, this is spiritual warfare. This is real life stuff going on. It's not just, you know, dealing with stuff with your kids or stuff with your spouse or stuff with work, stuff with your neighbors sometimes. It's kingdom stuff that's going on. Because if we focus on our job or our school or our neighbors, then we won't focus on our walk with Christ and how we can love our neighbors and be Christ-like at our job and be a witness at our school. Remember, it's Christ who does the saving, not us. It just starts with our walk that we reflect Christ. We are his tools. Each of us is unique, and he has a specific plan for us to be formed into his image and to be craftsmanship to help bring the message of hope and healing to a dark and hurting world. In, in the special way that you have been chosen, you have been chosen in a unique way to preach the gospel. Even if it's not up here on a Sunday morning, you have a unique gift about you, a unique way about you, a unique personality that God has gifted you to be able to preach the gospel in your life to others. It's nice news if it's just, oh, the gospel. That's a nice message. That's kind. That's sweet. That's nice. If that's all you take it as. But it's not a Hallmark show. We're not in a movie. This is real life. It's life or death. It's a message of confession and repentance. The word message. We need the gospel because we are messengers. We're messengers of the gospel. The gospel is God's good news that offers us a new way of life. And if we make the decision to believe and trust, and we put our faith in Jesus Christ to be transformed, to live a life of love and forgiveness through the Holy Spirit, if we do that, that's when the message becomes real for ourselves and for other person, people. Excuse me. What is the message you are sending? Jesus brought God's kingdom, and he lived for others, and he died for their sin, and he was raised from the dead, and he asked you to spread that message. He asked me to spread that message. And this is where the word mission comes in, after we get the idea of what the message is. We have the gospel message, so what's our mission? We need to remember our mission is to take this belief, this new life, and make him known to spread the good news, to know that our purpose is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You may have been the first person in your family to come to Christ. You may have been the first person in your neighborhood or in your group of friends or your job or your school that started a relationship with Jesus or going to church. So you made that decision to begin a new way of life and live the kingdom way. So now is the opportunity for you to help someone else where they might be that person waiting and needing to hear the gospel our mission is that we are messengers and we are called to take this good news to all the earth it's our call it's our duty it's our responsibility no christian is exempt oh you don't get no you don't have to carol you're all set you can be excused this week of sharing the gospel joel we need you to go extra hard this week i need you to really focus on spreading the good news no it's not like that all of us have to be the messengers. We are called to take the good news to all the earth. I don't know about you, but when I first became a Christian, I was very overzealous, very excited, very, you know, impacted by, you know, my salvation experience. I was listening and I was learning and I was wondering and I was asking questions and I was reading. And when I heard that term, go into all the world and preach the gospel, I was wondering, am I supposed to be a missionary? Am I supposed to move to a new land? Or at least, minimum, how many mission trips should I go on? I'm a Christian, so how, how, much, how often should I leave the country and go on mission trips? Now, 20-plus years later, what I've come to find is you have to have a calling to move to a new land or to be a missionary to a people group. But you all have a calling to be a missionary wherever you are. Here's the thing. I am so grateful for every missionary everywhere but i don't want to box god in and think that that message meant i have to move away no right where you are he wants to move in you our mission field can be our back door god has brought us the nations in this country 
God has brought so many cultures, so many ethnicities, so many backgrounds, and he's asking you to raise your hand to say, here I am, Lord, send me. How about this? I want you to raise your hand and just keep raised as I ask these questions. Do you know someone who in your neighborhood isn't a Christian or isn't saved? Do you know someone, keep it up, uh, at work, at school, in your family, or even in your household, right? All right, you can put your hand down. You all know someone. That means the harvest is still plentiful. If you've heard that before, the Bible says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We have workers right here in this room. Sisters and brothers, every day should be a missions trip for us. We still need to pray fervently for the lost all around the world. We need to pray for indigenous people groups who haven't heard the gospel. We need to pray for the nations. We need to pray for those who don't have the word of God printed in their language. We need to pray for missionary workers. We need to pray for the persecuted church. Yes, keep praying daily. But you need to pray for your neighbor right next door to you too. Let's open our hearts and see who God has put in our lives for a reason. In Acts, if we remember, when Saul was blinded and the Lord spoke to him and he was blinded for three days, Saul was living a bad lifestyle of killing Christians. And I was thinking about this. When he became Paul, he was given a new heart and new eyes. So how are we, to the people we're around every day, looking at them through the eyes of Saul with judgment, with an accusing spirit, with a persecution mindset who do we need to look at and put on the glasses of Paul the new man to love the lost and to seek out them so that they would be saved because somebody loved us somebody sought after us amen somebody cared enough for us to have a heart of Paul to say I love you and you need Jesus our mission saints is to be witnesses you might not feel strong in evangelism, but take heart because someone evangelized to you and maybe they weren't even an evangelist or what you would describe as an evangelist. Think about that. Someone was faithful enough to tell you about the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's truly the greatest privilege and responsibility ever that God would choose us to proclaim his good news. So whatever responsibility you have at work, whatever thing you're in charge of, whatever thing that you have that's so important to you, this trumps it. This goes beyond everything you can imagine, that this responsibility is the greatest responsibility ever given. The very fact that our church is still here 30 years later, that's a testimony because so many churches have started and closed. And so many churches haven't made it. And in other countries, so many churches have, even in this country, been burnt down or been persecuted or been imprisoned just for being believers. We need to proclaim the gospel because if we don't proclaim, if we don't hark the herald, if we don't share, then we're missing opportunity for others to see Jesus, to be saved. They could come into judgment, but God gives them chances, and he gives them chances through us to share, to love, and to care. Church, this is a matter of death and life, life and death. Sharing on Facebook is good. We, we try to share, you know, nice memes or encouraging scriptures. But that's not enough. That's just one venue. We're called, like we preached in previous messages, to be the salt and the light of the earth. To share the good light, the light of Jesus, into this dark world. And we are going to face challenges. The, it's not going to be easy. We need to remember that we're given all authority when we preach and share God's message. When we follow him and preach his message, there is power to change the world. See, you might not feel strong, but God gives you the power to change the world. Jesus is the true Lord of the world. He's the real king of all creation, and he gives us the Holy Spirit that we would be agents of change to be world changers. To believe it, to live it, and to tell it. In Galatians 1.4, Jesus came to rescue us from the evil world. I would say right now it feels like an evil world and we need to be rescued from it. Amen? I was thinking about the Bible. 
And if you read the Bible and you see all the sin and all the wickedness that went on, lots of crazy stuff, lots of crazy things that were worshipped or sacrificed, lots of crazy stuff that was happening within the communities. But you know what? It made me think of that nothing is new under the sun. So a lot of Christians nowadays, including myself sometimes, get really upset at what we see online. It just bothers us, just disturbs us, just like, oh, it just gives us a bad feeling about everything we notice. So we might turn the news off or say, I'm done with Facebook for a week. I'm taking a break. I'm taking a hiatus. Or like, turn your, turn your ear off to your neighbor who's constantly gossiping or telling you stuff about what's going on in the world. Whatever the thing may be, the reality of is all that stuff that you hear that bothers you, upsets you, aggravates you, annoys you, or even angers you, nothing's new under the sun. God has seen every sin that you are bothered or offended by. And the thing is, is for us to be able to combat that sin, it starts at home. It starts with our heart. It starts with us fellowshipping together and encouraging one another, us coming to Bible study and understanding the word of God, us hearing the preaching and teaching and taking it with us through the week so that we can be an agent of change for all that crazy stuff that's going on in the world because God uses his people on earth to help deal with those sins. To be a world changer, you have to pr first be a home changer. It starts right in our hearts, right in our home, and right in our church. And here's the challenge. There will be darkness around you. And it feels like the darkness is getting darker and darker every day. It feels like that for me in America. But could it be this? Could it be that Jesus' followers, God's children, that his believers, the saints, that we're getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer every day? Could it be that things are looking bleak because we're not shining bright? Are we putting our lamp under a basket or are we shining it bright for all to see? If you think of all the current day realities, I've made a whole list and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to share them because you know them. Everything, whether it's social media or politics or news, everything that's going on in our world, we'll call it in culture and society, that could be a whole sermon in itself of all the things that we're dealing with. We could look at them all right here, all the things that are going on, like pastor's been preaching about, to combat spiritual influences. When we face them and they come at us, how are we handling them? How are we dealing with them? As a Christian, you have some options. You can quit and give up, because I'm sure you all know religious people, church people, or even Christian people, self-proclaiming Christians that have given up, have quit on God or quit on church. You can just do the status quo. You could just show up on Sunday and see you next week. You could do that, right? Or you could maybe keep going. You stay in the game, right? But you're not active. You're not active in his power and in his authority. Or you can press on towards the prize. You can seek the goal. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit, carrying the mission with you wherever you go, and most importantly, it's beyond you. So how you live life in front of your children or your family or your friends or your coworkers, your goal isn't just right now to make an impact. Your goal is to make an impact beyond you. So let's say you do move and you move to a different community. What impact did you make on the community you lived in? Or let's say you pass away. What impact do you have on the people that lived around you and how will they remember you? The impact of a sermon on Sunday is so that you can take that and go throughout the week. Basically, let me say it this way. The impact of a sermon isn't Sunday morning only. The impact of a sermon has on you is everything in between today and next week. That's what the impact should have. If the opening question I asked was, why are we doing this and why are we here? I think by now the answer is clear. The world is dark and is opposition to the word of God. We need to stay focused on our call and not forsake the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. We are his hands and feet. We are called to be his body. We can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. We need each other. A question you can take with you this week is, what are you going to do this week that will keep the gospel message alive in your life? And I want to give you some scripture references to think about that. How can I keep the gospel alive on a daily basis? In the book of Mark 1.15, Jesus preaches the kingdom of God. He preaches 
this gospel. And we are called and challenged to believe it. And we are called to make a choice. And then in Romans 1.16, we're told to not be ashamed of that choice. To not be ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God at work in us. And we are encouraged by it, but not embarrassed by it. In Galatians 1, 6, we saw that some of the churchgoers had turned away. They deserted and abandoned the call. They started following different things, believing new ideas. And we are called to not get distracted. And one of the things about the Jezebel spirit or the Leviathan spirit that we've been talking about is the chaos and the distraction. And I believe the enemy wants our life to be a life of chaos, and he wants to distract us from the things of God. So we have to stay focused. It's sobering to know that we can have callous hearts, that we can become lukewarm, that we can fall away because it helps us stay on our guard, right? It's like an athlete. Have you ever seen athletes who are really in shape at one point, and after they retire, like one or two years later, you're like, who is that person? They're unrecognizable. Let's not be that person on Sunday that you're all built up here, you're on fire here, and throughout the week, you're not even recognizable as a Christian, right? Put it this way. The way of the cross, it says, Mark 8, 34 to 38. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me, for the sake of the gospel, they will save it. What good is it for some person to gain the whole entire world but forfeit their soul? What can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, then the Son of God will be ashamed of them when he comes in the Father's glory with the holy angels. See, people fell away and had callous hearts and became lukewarm because they didn't understand what the cost of true discipleship was. Children of God, if we are going to be the family of God, that we need to act like it. Otherwise, the enemy is going to try to lie and kill and destroy and distract and divide and devour our families. Just like he is trying to do that in your family or in my family, the enemy is waiting. He is waiting at your doorstep to snatch your children off your doorstep. The enemy does not want them to be raised in a Christian household. And someone spoke the gospel to you. And maybe you became a Christian in your adult life. But if you became a Christian as a child, the enemy was trying his hardest to not let that happen. And the world today we see is a godless generation who needs Christ. And the enemy has been succeeding at trying to confuse the next generation and distract and take them away from even the concept of God. It's, it's crazy. But what's even crazier is you and I have the power and authority of the gospel to make changes and to combat the enemy. Amen? What Pastor Jerry is preaching is about these spiritual influences, these things that you see written. We need to know that this is happening in our lives, in our homes, when we open a door to it, when we allow it in our homes, when we have influences that are affecting our mind, body, and spirit, and soul. Um, for Joy's baptism last week, I went to uh, the Dollar Tree, and I said, oh, do you have anything for baptism? And the manager there, he's been the manager for a long time. I can, as long as I've been going to that doll store, I've seen that guy there. And he said, oh, no, we stopped carrying that a long time ago. That became really unpopular. And it just hit me. I was like, whoa. Now, I didn't say anything to him, but in my spirit, I'm like, ooh, baptism became unpopular. So the world stopped carrying the things that they were selling to make money off of it. And then I went to the Christian store. We have a local Christian store. And, um, and I remember going there when our oldest was baptized, and they had a beautiful selection. And so with Joy I wanted to get her something special, so I went in, and I was looking for it, and so I couldn't find it, and I asked, and they said, oh, it's in a small corner over here, and they walked me over, and it was a small little corner of the Christian bookstore when it used to be the size of this stage because it was a very large store. And what that said to me is 
supply and demand. People aren't trying to get baptized. What's going on with this world? And it's not just about baptism, though. Be careful hearing what I'm saying. It's the little things daily that the enemy is attacking that Christians maybe are letting go. You can, oh, you, you can have this part of my life. Oh, you can have this part of my life. Slowly, you know, we give them the whole thing. So we have to actually combat the opposite. We have to push away the lies of the enemy and the snares of the devil. We have to keep what's holy. Amen? Hopefully I didn't go on too much of a tangent there, but it just, it just struck my spirit. Like, what is going on around us that we are not seeing? And, 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 and I don't want us to wake up after the fact. I don't want us to notice it after it already happened, right? Let's be diligent and diligent. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, that you will not grow weary or lose heart. Let me say this this way. You will have shame, but you need to endure it because God wants you in heaven. And he endured so much opposition, so he gives you the power here on earth to deal with the opposition that you're going to face. And he doesn't want you to grow weary or lose heart. Don't lose heart, church. Don't get distracted. One way for believers to not grow weary in the family of God is to be together. It's called community. And I love online church. I do. I really enjoy it. I, I listen to other messages all throughout the week. We actually, when we go to Florida to visit my family, we go to Life Church, one of the largest churches in the world because of how many campuses they have and how many people they reach online. And I think it's amazing, right? But there's something about the body of believers coming together in fellowship, encouraging one another, Carol giving testimonies. For us to be able to have someone, like someone who came up to me this morning and spoke something into my life, things like that, even things that are like, I need to check you, you know, like other things that might not feel good, but we need it to happen in our life. That's what the body of Christ is called to do for each other. So don't grow weary and don't lose heart. Don't be faint and don't forsake the assembly of the believers. Be in the family of God together. It's called community. It's called the body of Christ. It is not by accident that you're here today. It's not by accident that you're connected to this church because God places you into a family on purpose. When you are born again, we place our faith in God as our Savior and as the Father. We become children of God. We are brought into a new spiritual family. We're brought into a relationship with God, and God wants us to be in relationship with his people. Your relationship with God carries responsibility and privileges. If you bear the name of a son or daughter of God, you need to live like him and love like him and share him. And that starts in your home, and it carries throughout your day-to-day -day life wherever you go. If we want to see Onset Foursquare Church live out the character of God, that's how we bear Christ's image wherever we go, that we share the good news, that it doesn't have to be a shirt that we wear that says Onset Foursquare Church, but that someone would see and notice and recognize that something's different about us. They might not know what specific church we go to because in the end it's all one holy church, capital C. It's not about which church we attended, but God does use you and has a plan for you where you're planted. Okay. We share the good news and sharing that news, the news of the salvation of God's grace through faith in Christ. It's available to all who make that step of faith in. That's the thing. The first step to becoming a world changer is taking that step of faith. You've all heard the term soul winning. And I've heard that term. And it, sometimes it bothers me because like winning, you know, it, it's not a game. I'm not trying to win, but. When I think about it, I'm like, you know what? You can be lost or you can be saved. You can win or you can lose. It's a matter of life or death. Sunday mornings, the pastors are going to preach. Wednesday nights, the pastors are going to teach the word. It's up to you. It's up to me if we listen, if we learn and grow, if we follow it or not. It's up to us. But to be world changers, we don't want to make the bad choice. We want to make the choice of the gospel. It would really help the cause of Christ to reach this nation, if everyone who claimed to be a believer here in America, that they actually followed Christ. But one thing I remember is Jesus said, excuse me, uh, a minister said to me once, you know, God doesn't need you. He wants you. 
but he gives you the opportunity to be a part of his call and his mission because he could do it with other people. But there's a reason why you're in these seats and you're hearing this message today. It's not by accident. Think about it. if Christians around the world, not even just this nation, but everywhere, if we are true agents of change, that together as the body of believers that we would be a force to be reckoned with, deep in prayer, saturated in his spirit, and digging into the word of God and loving others. We know that there is bad news out there. The bad news is that there's sin and sin is real, and it's out there lurking, okay? The death in the grave tries to imprison us daily, but God is good, and God can set us free, amen? amen. So whatever you are going through, God can set you free, no matter what you're facing. Sin equals death. But God, our Heavenly Father, shows us that his love is stronger than death. That is the powerful good news. That a wrecked, wrecked person who feels wrecked, that everything in their life is just feels destroyed and they feel wretched, that that person can be, that was born into sin can be set free from that sin, from their wickedness, and they can be transformed into a God-like life. In John 2, 6, it says, Whoever says that they follow God should walk the same way he walked. In other words, Christian, if we're claiming to be Christ believers, Christ followers, then we need to be Christ obeyers. I'm going to close with this last section. If we're saying we're all about the gospel lifestyle, then we need to walk the walk and talk the talk. His walk looked like this. This is what Jesus' walk looked like. Love God. Love your neighbors. Love yourself. Love your enemies. Forgive, repent, serve others, be selfless, and there's more and more and more that we could take as an example from Jesus. That more and more and more is called the kingdom of God. That's how God wants us to operate. Let me close with this, that we are encouraging you to be the gospel wherever you are and bring the gospel wherever you are. Bring the kingdom wherever you go. Hear it, read it, believe it, tell it, live it, and keep on living it and keep on telling it. My challenge to you is to go. Go through the doors and look at this day and this week as a mission field. Go live for others like Jesus did. Go love, go give, go sacrifice, go be a servant. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, house the homeless, look after the widow, visit the imprisoned. In summary, it's simple. Love others. Look after those who are in low places and who are hurting. And if you need modern-day examples of what it might look like to be hungry or naked or homeless or widowed or in prison, let me give you some, some mind-altering things to just shift your focus because sometimes maybe you don't have an opportunity to go in prison because of your past. Or maybe you don't have you know, the opportunity to visit the homeless because your community you know, is an affluent community. Whatever the case may be, let me give you some examples of how you can transfer those thoughts into what's going on today. People in 2021 are facing serious struggles. People are dealing with loneliness, depression, anxiety, identity issues, purpose, meaning, drug addiction, alcohol abuse, and I could just keep going and going and going. If we're called to feed the hungry, then maybe we need to feed the hungry souls with the truth. Don't keep the truth to yourself. Share it with those hungry and thirsting, those, are those who are thirsty and thirsting for righteousness. Clothe the naked. People are walking around naked of their identity. They don't know what to think and what to feel. They don't know who they are, but they're searching for something. Help people. Help people come to know the true God that they're searching for, that they can be a child of God, that he would love them and care for them. House the homeless. Maybe people don't feel a belonging. They don't feel they have a home anywhere. They don't feel they have friends or connections or fellowship. Maybe they have a roof over their head, but it might be without any meaning in their life. Help people in that sense. Look after the widow. You know, widows tend to be feeling alone, feeling lonely, not having much and doing it on their own. So who are those people in your life who maybe, you know, are struggling, could be dealing with anything, could be dealing with depression, could just need someone to be there for them? Visit the imprisoned, this world. Right now, we are living in, has some dark areas that we are facing in this nation and in everything going on in the country and the world. People are turning to drugs and alcohol and suicide. How can you 
visit with them to meet their needs, to actually connect with them, to make a meaningful connection. You can go and be the light of Christ in the darkness with all power and authority to do greater things through him who can perform miracles through you facing all these things and more. Your mission field is wherever you are this week, even on social media. Travel throughout your day sharing the crucified, risen Jesus, the true Lord of the world, and the real living King of all creation. Share with others that Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, loves them, and that he died for their sin, and that he took the punishment on the cross, that he was crucified and raised into heaven and sent his Holy Spirit to guide us and to comfort us so that we can truly live to have eternal, everlasting life, so that while on earth we can go and we can be world changers. Lord, I pray that we would be world changers today and this week, Lord. I pray that we would get the whole idea of why we do a bulletin or announcements or social media or serving groups, ways to get involved, Lord. It's because we want to make change and make impact and make connection to people's lives, Lord. We want to show them all that you're doing through us, Father God, and it's because of your love, how you came into our hearts, Lord. You came into our lives, Lord. You change us all around, Lord, Father God. Lord, that we're not even recognized for the old way, Father God. Lord, people see us new and that we see, like with Paul, Lord, with eyes to love others and to reach the lost, Lord, that taking it seriously, Father God, that there's some sin and darkness in this world, but we need to be the salt and the light, Lord. We need to bring your life to people, to others. Lord, it might be uh, daunting or overwhelming to think about this, but it's simple at the same time. Your gospel message is simple. It's a message of love. Lord, it's a message of repentance. It's a message of forgiveness, Lord. I pray that we die daily to ourselves. We humble ourselves. We have true meaningful connection with you and that lord we don't hold it in our own hearts to ourselves only lord but we share it we give it we live it we talk it lord that we would love others wherever they are lord that there would be no judgment father god to come to the cross lord because we all had stuff that we thought we couldn't bring to the cross lord Lord, we thank you for all that you did for us, to die for us, to sacrifice your life for us, Father God, for raising your son to heaven, Father God, and sending your Holy Spirit to live with us so we don't have to do this alone, Lord. Lord, we just we receive your power and your authority to go throughout this week to, to take the gospel message and to preach the kingdom of God to others, preaching through our lifestyle, preaching through our obedience to you, preaching through just our love for others, Lord. So forgive us, change us, form us, and make us new, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Go be a world changer. Amen.